So earlier this year, we spoke to Carl Cox on the phone about the season to come. But now we know where he lives, so we're going to dig a little deeper. He invited us. We're not just stalking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's okay up there. All right, good. I'm good too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having us in your crib, in the Coxie crib today. Uh, most of our uh, people watching will already know what it's like to experience a Coxie set, but we want to know what it's like from your side. <laughs> so, can you tell me what usually goes through your mind in the half hour or so before you go onto the decks? Um, what goes through my mind really is, is me knowing. Um, that the, the, the tracks and the music that I want to play before I, before I start the set, that I have the, the records that I really love to play, the classics and what basically makes it my sound, what I enjoy. And then with the new records, the new music that's coming out, to make sure that I'm on top of all of that before I leave the house. It, it, it's not a dress rehearsal, you know, when I go out there, it is it, I'm on, that's it, no going back. Do you still get nervous? I still get nervous, yeah. I, I, I think it'd be pretty weird if I didn't get nervous, you know, I'd be like a robot. Um, <laughs> I, I get nervous a little bit based on things can go wrong and things do go wrong and things have gone wrong. Even me playing at Space on Tuesday, uh, I have this kind of intro uh, that I like to play and I have these visuals all set to the intro, so it makes a bit more of an impact when I come on mm -hmm. and I didn't have, to, I couldn't find it, <laughs> the intro part to play, so I had to wing it and just go, right, oh, I'm here, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> straight in with the record. I'm thinking, oh God, yeah. But nobody, nobody knows these things. It's no. just like, you, you just go through the motions of that, and you don't know how the night's going to go, how people are going to receive you. You know, I mean, it's nice that people come along and they pay the money and they 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 go right. We're going to go to Cole Cox this night and they're going to come and see me. Um, but some of it, you know, you just don't know if if they're there to see see something that they've heard about and they've, and they've decided that they don't like it so based on what they don't understand or, or people that are Colcox fans and they go, right, you know, we're, we're, in, the, we're in for the for the full journey. But I've, I always treat every party like it's my first party. What's the feeling like after the set? Uh, I take a big, deep <laughs> sigh and a deep breath. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done, you know. <laughs> uh, wow. And then it's a journey. It's emotional, you know, when you're playing music. Um, when you find something that really hits you, you know, emotionally, it could be about anything. And um, and you share that with, with other people who also feel the same about what you've just played. That's a, ma that's a massive connection with the people. And also, you know, you're taking yourself through an initial journey. When you're really digging deep into your music collection, um, you know, I don't just play for one hour and just play all the big hit records. You know, I really do dig deep into my collection based on, you know, where I want to take people. You know, whether it's uh, a housey affair, whether it's an old school classic house or techno, whether it's techno, hard techno, you know, all of this is it's, it's all it's all purely based on uh, um, trying to 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 make that initial journey for people to enjoy your music selection, and uh, that's not an easy thing to do. But if you can get it right and you and you really feel that you're connecting with the people with your music, and then that's that is an emotional journey for sure. So at the end of it is. Mentally, yeah. because you're choosing every record as if it was your last record that you're ever going to be playing. Um, that's a hard thing to do, you know. If I just had a pre, pre, pre uh, organized set and I go right from 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 A to to B, here's all the music I'm going to play, and then that's not an emotional journey. It's just something you're just you're just doing. But when you have no idea what you're going to play or how you're going to play it, um, this is something of which. Uh, I've learned very quickly on, on how to read people and, and how to read the night itself. So you, are you constantly kind of thinking ahead and thinking of your next step? Or, you know, you're saying it's an emotional journey. Are you sort of more on, like, creative autopilot? Does it just sort of flow? Yeah, I, 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 creative autopilot <laughs> is a really good one because uh, if when, you, when you're on, I, I, I see everybody and I can feel everything that's going on around me, but I, I'm, I'm still oblivious to all of it. Really, mm. you know, it, it could be ten people in front of me or fifty thousand. It doesn't matter. Okay. I'm in the zone. I'm in the flow of what I'm doing, and it's and it, the night's happening. It's going along, and I and I'm always kind of thinking maybe two records ahead, not even one record okay. ahead. So I'm going to play this one. I'm going to play that one in a minute, and that one later. You know, I'm always thinking like that, and I, I've always done it in that way. Even when I was playing vinyl, I'd be choosing records, and I play that one in a minute. That one's going to be played two records. I play that one right now. 
and that's how I do it. Your brain capacity of, of how you're thinking your night and how you're playing your night and what you're doing to create your night is it's, it's quite demanding. People don't realise how, how, how taxing it can, mm. very, can, it can be because th don't forget the whole night is based on you, the individual, the, uh, the DJ who is in front of all these people to, enter, to, to entertain. Now, the thing is, if I could juggle my turntables at the same time and, and maybe you know <laughs> drink drink some uh some sort of vodka uh a bottle of vodka at the same time through and, the eye <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah while i'm djing and putting doing the perfect mix and that's entertainment right? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of things uh could be distracting to that focus when you're in the middle um, well, the, the thing is, when you've got people shouting at you, you don't know why they're shouting at you for some reason. <laughs> they they, they want to talk to you about a record that came out three years ago, and maybe if you have an opportunity to play it, that'd be really great, because me and my girlfriend just got engaged, and it'd be amazing if you could just... I'd be like, what? <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but right I'm now... Working. I'm working. I'm a little bit busy right now, you know, and some people get in the DJ booth and they grab your leg, and if I go, grab it, and you're down by the... <sighs> What are you doing? What do you want? Do you want a cigarette? I don't even smoke. <laughs> like, oh my God. And then sometimes you get the odd occasional celebrity that decides they want to be in a DJ booth. So we've, we've had P. Diddy in the DJ booth. Uh, What's P. Diddy like in the booth? Do you know what? He was actually really cool. Okay. You know, really cool. Um, uh, he, he, you know, also, Dr. Dre, uh, someone said, Oh, yeah, I'm playing. You know, Dr. Dre's in the house. I'm like, Yeah, whatever. I'm playing, and he said, no, no, <laughs> he's over there. I was like, Dr. Dre's not going to no. be here. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> he pops around, and Dr. Dre. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, of course, all my zone and everything, and my records, free records, all went out the window. <laughs> so, oh, my God, respect, Dr. Dre's in the house. He goes, hey, man, don't worry, just keep doing your thing. I love it, you know, and he stayed and enjoyed himself. So these things can be distracting as well. You know, sometimes you get your, your heroes turn up and... and uh, want to say hello you know which you just can't believe so. so where do you stand on booth antics then like do you prefer to have your space or is it the more the merrier if it's your mates if there's too many people in the dj booth when people on the dance floor looking in they think that this party is is just for me here up here where the actual party's down there so i encourage people to be down the real party is not here it's down there yeah. um a lot of DJs want to be surrounded by a lot of people because, you know, they're probably a bit insecure and they want a lot of people around them. So, OK, fine. I'm not insecure at all. I am here to, to, to give the people exactly what they pay for and what they've come for, um, not to see a lot of people jumping around me. And how about sharing control? You know, how does going back to back change uh, the experience for you? When you're playing back to back, you have to kind of think comp that you complement the DJ. It's not a versus. It's not a me and him or me on her. Uh, the idea is that the, the the that when you gel with such a such a DJ like this year, um, people saw me, uh, seen me play more back to back sets this year than any other year, mm. um, and had an amazing time with uh, Marco Carolla, which he he played for me in space, and I played for him, for him in Amnesia, and. It was more complimentary to the sound. I have a much tougher, harder sound, and then I want to tell you that. But the idea is to kind of come to where he is and to complement that, and vice versa a little bit on my side. So therefore, when it comes together, what people hear out of the speakers is an energy between both of us. Mm -hmm. And and that's and when that happens, when that gels, it's it's an amazing feeling. Let's just go back to your connection with crowd. So when um, have you ever had that experience where you sort of sense that maybe they're not wherever you're going they're not quite getting it yeah. like does that does that happen to you anymore yeah. and if so what do you do yeah no, no. <laughs> it doesn't happen it, 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 doesn't, happen. No, it doesn't happen if, if, if the crowd a bit you know want to hear more rock and roll or something like that it's a motorhead i've got it <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter you know want to hear some reggae yeah i've got that too the thing is i'm a dj you know you read the crowd you, you see what's up so you've been doing this for like uh, a thousand years or something. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> maybe more. <laughs> um, has your experience of DJing and being in the booth changed since you started? No, not really. Um, I've always found that if I've got the tools to work with, which, which I work on now, and I keep chopping and changing, but the idea is to keep up my head and uh, above, uh, head and shoulders above the technology of what we're exposed to and I have a really good booth sound system monitoring uh, I'm quite happy everything else yep. is a bonus <laughs> and what makes that what makes that set stand out for you now well I think a lot of it is the the, the longer that I play the better it becomes you know uh, when it when you just kind of go in and just do like a set for an hour an hour and a half you don't really tell your story or you, you can't really tell take the journey of 
of what's available to you in a sense in how much music there is out there. So I, I think the longer that I play, the, the, the more people understand where I'm coming from. And it is all about music in the end of the day. So for me, um, as long as I'm able to really tell my story within the time that I frame that I have, and then that for me is, is the reason why I do what I do. Hi, I'm Carl Cox, and you are watching I Be For Spotlight.